Hey, welcome back everybody. Welcome back to Garden Fever. I'd like to talk to you today about this plant. This is a personal favorite of mine and what you're looking at is the Jerusalem Sunchoke or Artichoke. I have no relation to Jerusalem. In fact, there's some debate over what uh, the origins of the name came from, but uh, it's been called the Sunroot, it's been called the uh, Sunchoke, the Earth Apple. Um, there's another name for it that's uh, uh, the more scientific name, and it comes from the Astra C family. And I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but uh, uh, why well, I wanted to show this to you is because this is another one of those plants that are easily grown, but can provide a lot of benefit for you. Um, in fact, they're grow they're uh, hardy between 4A and 9B, so. Uh, Obviously, there's limits. All plants have limits on where they can grow and where they can't. But um, it's a full sun, partial shade. It does better in full sun, uh, but it can grow in, in some shade. If it has the right conditions, it'll do okay. Uh, it does better in eastern sun. I know that. It is part of the sunflower family. It is a type of sunflower. And it does better in the eastern sun in the mornings than it does in the fall and I, or in the, in the sunset. So I have this up against this wall to make a uh, shade block on the west side. And as you can see, they're doing, they're doing great. Uh, in the previous year, I had got bombarded with uh, grasshoppers on this side. My neighbor has a field to the west of me that's pretty much weeds. And the new neighbor is actually grooming it well this year. Um, the old neighbor didn't do anything, so it's just infested with dandelions. And, grasshoppers but uh, I did spray this with neem oil and I put a drip line on it and we're and we're doing a lot better the radiant heat from this just was a little bit too much for them uh, so they just kind of just didn't do as good but we've almost doubled the the amount of leaves that are making I mean we do have some damage from bugs it's not a hundred percent but uh, it's much much better so anyway I'm really excited about that um, uh, it, it, it favors a wide variety of uh, soil types. Um, however, if uh, you do grow them, you want to grow them in loose and loomy, they don't do as well in clay. Now here in northern Utah we have clay soil, but right up against the side I have about that much of uh, homemade composted soil that I've made that is really loose and as you can see they're doing pretty good. I've seen people get these to be 10, 15 feet tall in the right conditions and when they're treated good. Um, we're about halfway through the growing season as you can see. We're roughly about 6 feet, so pretty good, but uh, they're grown for their root. It's a root plant. Um, you, the root is edible. They're great for diabetics, type 2 diabetes. Uh, unlike potatoes, there's no starch in them. It contains a thing called inulin, which not, not insulin, but inulin, which uh, is great for people with di with diabetes. So this is a, this is a good potato substitute. Um, it looks a lot like the ginger root when you pull it up, um, and I'll have some examples and pictures or something I can show you. But uh, so it's mainly a root plant. That inulin will also give you gas. Fair warning. But uh, anyway, uh, I actually use these mainly to shade this wall side, and uh, although I do eat the eat the roots, I leave them in the ground. So I'll I'll towards the fall I'll probably chop all this foliage down and recompost that back into the soil kind of use it as a chop and drop um, and then I leave them in the ground and then in the winter my soil here is loose enough that I can dig them up in the winter even and believe it or not uh, Jerusalem sun chokes will taste better in colder weather than in warmer weather they stress when it gets really really hot so in the winter months is when you want to harvest these and they do really good they do really really good uh, and, and they taste really good they taste like a water chestnut so you can make fries you can make uh, like potato chips but you know for some sunshine chips so there's a lot of little things you can do with these um, they, they do have nutrients they the uh, vitamins is a b c b6 b12 there's calcium riboflavin uh, niacin uh, uh, there's iron, magnesium, uh, potassium, and phosphorus in them, so there's some nutrient value to them. Um, people used to make alcohol with them. 
Um, you, uh, the Native Americans used to use them for food. These are native to uh, northeastern, northern eastern uh, in North America, all the way into Canada, all the way down to the northern parts of Florida. So on the eastern end more, but this is a Native American plant in North America. So they do, they're acclimated to our environment. Native American Indians here used to use them. So there's a lot of uh, cool things. One thing that a lot of people don't know about Jerusalem sunchokes is they're a great companion plant to cucumbers and tomatoes they can grow next to. However, they can be very evasive. It's been rumored that when you when you harvest them all out that you're almost guaranteed to not get them all. So make sure that when you place them where you place them, they're in the spot that you want them. Uh, some containment measures are needed. I got them up against this west side. It's mainly uh, a field of weeds beyond this, so I'm, I'm not concerned about them spreading. Uh, I will show you some pictures of them coming up out of the ground because they come up uh, relatively soon in the spring, like towards mid to, to late spring. But uh, in the past, I had mistaken them for weeds and yanked them. And it wasn't until I pulled up the, the actual root that I realized that what it was. So you want to be careful of that, but they're a great plant. Uh, they're a beautiful sunflower. They will attract uh, birds and they will attract um, bees. Okay, They don't grow big enough. They're a smaller sunflower. They won't grow big enough to get seeds from them, though, you know, like sunflower seeds. But uh, they make a good chop and drop. Uh, they, uh, I've seen ants attack them. I've seen earwigs in them and I've seen grasshoppers. So they do, although if I were to move these into a, a calmer part of my yard where it doesn't get so much radiant heat and it's not so stressed out, these would be much more vibrant and, and healthier. However, I want them here because they block this west wall that gets really hot and that actually cools my garage uh, a few degrees. So nothing too extreme. It's not like air conditioning, but it does help. So I, I, I keep these here for this reason. And then in the winter, I, I, the radiant heat helps keep the, the get from freezing too hard to where I can cultivate them. You can grow them in containers. They do absolutely fine in containers. In fact, they don't keep well in like refrigerated, just raw. Keep them in the dirt. They will preserve better in the dirt. So if you want to store them, let's say you dig them up on in the fall or late fall and you put them in a bucket, fill it full of soil or dirt and then put it in like a cool basement. They'll probably keep there the whole um, winter whereas if you just put them in the fridge they'll eventually go bad they look very similar to ginger root. Um, that being said uh, they don't uh, if if part of the root is exposed and green just like with potatoes it's not good to eat that so those are usually the ones that I'll put back in the ground if I need to I haven't harvested and eaten enough of these with my with my particular small family that I worry about that. There's always a return. I get it all the time. It's a constant flow of sun chokes and I'm very happy about that because it's a food source and what's most important and what I like best about it is it's a food source in the winter. They taste better in the winter. You can harvest them in the winter. So this is a, this is a plant I like to grow for that reason because when you're in the winter, there's a lot less variety, a lot less things that you can eat. This is one that if, you, if it isn't frozen in the ground, if you can prevent that with like a thick mulch or a cover, you yank that cover off and you can get to those. They taste really good in the winter. But anyway, these are sun chokes and I'll have some pictures for you to, to kind of give you some examples. Um, they just barely started to pop their sunflowers, so I'm excited. I do have some pictures of past years and I'll show those to you so you can kind of see the sunflower since we're not quite there yet right now. Uh, but anyway, this is Corey Lefevre with Garden Fever. Please like, subscribe, share, and all that fun stuff. Uh, if there's any information you know about these that I didn't bring out in this video or I forgot to bring out, please mention it in the comments. I'm all about uh, adding on to it. Um, with that, I'll let you go, and we'll see you next time.